I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Soul Intent Arts is my soul tinting practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, animism, soul tending, death walking, and how all of those are in relationship on my path. I started working with the runes in season as a devotional practice for myself, and it grew into an undertaking shared by many other folks along the way. This cycle marks 11 years of the weekly rune, and I want to thank everyone for the support, insights, and growth we've shared through it because of what it has become together. Thank you to my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the runecast possible with their financial support. Please support my work. If you have benefited from the runecast, the podcast, or the free articles on the runes, animism, energy hygiene, death walking, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support by buying my books everywhere that you can buy books, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal, Venmo, or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of the Weekly Rune there, and thank you for that. I've got a couple of new things on the horizon. I will be hosting some open death walking group sessions this autumn and winter on Patreon. If you're curious about what death work is, what it looks like in the day-to-day, bring your questions and let's chat a bit. Also, I'll have a new self-paced course on neurodivergence affirming spiritual practices that I co-taught with Rainbow Winicky. We talk about ritual, cosmology, and relationships on your spiritual path as a neurodivergent person, how that can all be complicated, and also really validating of who you are and how you move in the world. So I'll keep you updated on that. In the meantime, check out Rainbow and their work at Rainbow Chrysalis Coaching on Instagram. The Weekly Rune is out, and it's a rune cast that I've done for 11 years, focused on Nigel Pinnock's calculation of a pan-cultural runic calendar. It's focused on the half-month rune, which I center in ecosystem with the elements, direction, seasons, and spirits of place. And I invite you to do the same in the way you relate to those beings of your place space and see how your rune work deepens. There are so many approaches to runic calendars. Check out Nordic Animism if you haven't, and their work with the Nordic Animus calendar, currently honoring the year of On with worldwide celebrations on holy days throughout the year. If you want to learn more about runic calendars, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. The one that I work with is explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. The full version of the weekly rune is available weekly, only through Patreon, though you can read the highlights for free on my website, soulintentarts.com. All the runecasts are fully available two weeks after a publication there, and you can get notified when they come out by subscribing at soulintentarts.com. In this episode of Verbing with the Runes, we're focusing on wunyo. Wunyo. Wu, wun, wunyo, win. If there's one rune everyone wants to have in their rune cast, it's this one. The rune of joy, of the fruits of labor revealed, particularly where there's typically been disharmony or where efforts are usually thwarted. With Runyo, there's a sense of accomplishment, of wishes, dreams, and desires having come true. It's a state out of the norm, and it's from a place of unity. Elements, relationships, life forces, weird, orlog, came together, colluding for this manifestation to occur. Wunyo is a true synergy of seen and unseen, colliding in some wanted thing. It truly feels like the multiverse is on your side. I usually see folks expressing Wunyo one of two ways. The first 
is sheer bliss. This state of fairy tale whimsy draped in cottage core that sneaks up on us and brings sheer delight. When I see Wunyo presented as bliss, it's this Shazam moment that's completely out of our control. It's all magic. Another way I see Wunyo presented is as an earned reward, but it's twisted up in work ethic, American dream inflections cloaked in law of attraction jargon. Yes, there's some creating in manifestation. It takes some effort, sometimes a lot of effort, depending on what you're working on, who you are, and how you're in relationship with that potential, that outcome. The barriers can be real. So that part of Wunyo can feel a bit fraught. All of that to say, it's not all about magic or elbow. I maintain that Wunyo falls somewhere amongst those with an important piece that doesn't get elevated in those extremes, and that is relationship. Specifically, the relationships that made that moment happen. In Runic Book of Days, I wrote about Wunyo. If the moment is a cake glowing with candles, Wunyo is the wish made behind closed eyes. It is the split second during which every cell conspires in support of the deepest desire and aligned elements usher that manifestation forward. When I look at Wunyo as an animist in the Elder Futhark progression from Gebo, bonding and relationship, Wunyo takes the Gebo experience of intimate overture to the next level, which is agency evolving from that relationship or that relationship creating its own energy in the world. It's the celebration of those Gebo bonds manifest in the world as their own energy. Wunyo is what keeps us in Gebo because those bonds do things in our lives. They become their own magic in the world. Wunyo is a moment of realizing that sweet things happen, somewhat of our own efforts, of the efforts of folks we engage, and of unseen benefactors we can't necessarily know. That's the bit from Runic Book of Days about aligned in elements ushering the moment forward. Yes, we did work for that moment. And yes, something magical happened that had nothing to do with anything we did. Those paths crossed and it was good. So absolutely, we can celebrate the hard work and the payoff, but neither of those things is the moment of joy itself. That's a subtle difference, though distinct and important, and it's what allows us to really hone in on the relationship part of it. Given that, I would say that Wunyo has a lot to do with trust. Literally, this is me saying it, not anything that's attested. Wunyo comes at the end of the first et. It's most definitely a high note to end on, and thank the God in for it because the second debt is basically a hit and run of agency collision on repeat. It's the plot twist part of the Elder Futhark. You're first adding along, soling in form, and next thing you know, you flatten and or are flattened by someone else who's first adding along, just doing their thing. With that sharp transition between etir, it can be hard to remember the joy. It can be challenging to remember and truly feel that there are forces in the multiverse that see you, actual, wonderful you, and they don't just want you to succeed. They're working to that end with you. And that takes trust. It takes faith and maybe sort of hope. That's the reason my go-to verb with Wunyo is to revel. It isn't just joy, like this fleeting state you feel, but one that you roll around in. You get it all over you. You express joy through you so that it's fully felt and becomes its own force in the world with its own agency and plans. And when we can so fully filter joy through us, 
when we can revel in it, we're showing trust in the forces of other who look after us. It takes faith to really grok wunyo at felt internalized levels. And no lie, it's been a rune that's harder for me to hold. There are forces that want your success. There are random good things that happen. And there's work to be done to make dreams come true. All of it is real. And when it manages to come together in a moment, what a moment it is. It's truly an ecstatic moment. Can you enjoy it? Can you revel in it? Yes. Yes, you can. Thank you for listening. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes as verbs or in season or however you feel called to work with them, or if you just want to drop me a line, you can do that at Kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y at soulintonarts.com. Also check out earlier episodes by downloading them and you can learn more about me, Runic Book of Days, and my work by visiting Soul Intent Arts. I'm most often on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. You can also find the notes on this episode on my website under the menu option, Learn Livable Rune Lore. The transcript of this episode can be found with the episode description. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird. Thank you for all you do in the world. <laughs>